All right, we got the fist bumpage. Everybody's introducing each other, telling everybody their names, as though that matters. Play foosball. Yeah, hell from. Where do you give people hell from? Cam Burrows and Richard Tench on the other side of the table. I'll have to switch that. Okay, there we go. All right, we're, we're good. We're good to go. One to nothing already in the game one match here between Brandon Munoz and Tim Lynch. Did I say Richard Tench earlier? Oh, I did say Richard Tench. He's on the other side of the table. Okay, those names got me messed around. Nice, nice goal by Mr. Tench. Right into the slingshot. I like that. Good grief. This match is going to be over before. I don't know what I was going to say there. Before the next one starts. Nice Ryan Moore there. Now, you heard me say Ryan Moore. Some people call that a John Wayne. And it was decided officially, I don't know, a year or two ago, that that shot is no longer the John Wayne. What does John Wayne have to do with foosball? Meanwhile, you got Ryan Moore, who does it better than anybody. So we call that the Ryan Moore. All right, there we go. <laughs> I didn't realize that was a quiet one. Sorry, I would have, I would not have run that one. Yeah, that's right. That's right. See, even he comes back in his own goal. He's just smiling ear to ear. And I root for that guy. Definitely a Led Zeppelin fan running the music today. Four to four. This game in the running for quickest game of the year so far. Four to four in about 90 seconds. Just picked up some new parts from Foosball Sports Network. Sweet. I got hit in the face with a ball at Portland mashup, and I just now had I had a PTSD response when I saw that ball leave the table and come this way. Now, we have a much bigger shield here, but still. Tench already has one goal this game. There's another. Dang it. All right, here we go. Game two underway. Just looked at my phone to see that I had a text ask, asking if I wanted any food. The answer was yes. Unfortunately, that message was sent over an hour ago. <laughs> Another Ryan Moore attempt there. This one did not make it. Thanks for the follow, your mom's gyno. Welcome in. Glad to have you. And from where do you hail in the world? That's the check-in question that we've had here. No obligation to answer that, by the way. We've got folks from Pittsburgh, Tampa, St. Louis, Denver, Medford, Oregon, Vancouver, Washington. Speaking of Vancouver, pretty sure Cam is from Vancouver, British Columbia. As he scores that one to make it one to nothing. One apiece. Right. Yeah. Nice job keeping that one out. Now we've spent most of the day looking at this overhead view, which makes the most of the screen area. It's all table, the entire view on that overhead shot. It's all table. 
And on the next ball, after this next go, we'll switch to the traditional view. And just let me know what you think. For those of you who've been watching most of the day, or some of the day even, a, a few games, a few balls, nothing at all. Curious to know your opinion between the overhead view or the traditional view. This is what we've watched foosball with for years. And when it comes to that near side, it's a little closer. Sometimes you lose it up against that wall. Not a big deal. And on this side of the table, you know, it's nice to, to see that. And it's sometimes cool seeing it from that end angle. I will admit I'm totally partial to the overhead view. But you tell me, what do you think? How do you feel about it? <laughs> now, by the way, the first, if you weren't watching, the, the first game, this is exactly what happened. It was four to two after about seven and a half seconds. And this game started exactly the same. Four to two in about seven and a half seconds. And here we are. Alan says, I'm liking the overhead view, but the traditional view feels easier to follow the fast movements. I do agree. Um, partially because you can see the hands. In this view right here, you can see the hands. So there's more to it. Um, there's more on the screen. And this one, it, it does take a little bit. It takes some getting used to, which is why on the, on the, sh on the, had a little light issue there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that there's no tears down there. We're not getting daggers thrown our way. On the on the close up on the when it's on the three bar, I switch to this because this is a little bit easier to see that I think. Could we have a zoom in and out for overhead to see hands, or is that silly? Um, I think we could have it. We could probably zoom it out a little bit more. Yeah, to include the hands. Well, we could we could take a peek at that. And I have I have such a limited perspective because I. Not only do I play foosball regularly, but I also have a lot of experience watching foosball. So I, I will admit that I'm partial just because of what I've seen forever. So on this view right here, if we had a, if we, if we zoomed out a little bit, and I don't even know if that's an option. Can we zoom out from this angle? This one? Can we come out any? To include their hands? Yeah, we might be able to. Yeah, we'll tinker with it between matches and just see. And if it looks good, then uh, then great. And if it looks bad, then I got no problem saying it looks bad. Out of the timeout. Cam. Not sure what he did. He did something quick. So quick that we didn't get to see it. Brandon clears it. <laughs> Brandon calls a timeout and jumps up front before the lights can change. Back to the comments about the overhead cam. The overhead is working better than expected. Still hard to find the ball at times when it's under the rod. The red light is pretty nice to touch, or is a pretty nice touch. Never even considered that. All right, we're going to game three. Hey, look at that, you get to see the same thing twice. That means I pushed the same button twice, <laughs> which means I messed up. <laughs> this is the yeah, there we go. That should go to the long one. All right. We'll fix that. That's funny. I don't know if you heard that. He said 90 seconds is a long time. That's That was after 30 seconds. And this is where you find out just how much time you actually have between games. I really like this for the five-bar battles. That's probably my favorite thing about the overhead. Is, is to be able to see the five bar passing. And really, this is the main time that you see that view. 
And we can go to the traditional when they're shooting out of the back. <laughs> He's just trying to tap it in there. What is he doing? <laughs> and I don't know if you can see. <laughs> in a second, I'll show Brandon. When he was doing all that, he was just smiling the whole time. Slingshot from Cam. They're letting it fly down there. I mean, they're, they're, uh, they're having fun. Great commercial. That is the work of, I was just told, Nathan Ham out of the Denver area in Colorado. And I thought, <laughs> I, this game has been so fast-paced that I, I actually thought that the cameras froze because he didn't move for more than two seconds. You got to talk to whoever's running the music. You have these gaps of silence. Get Ray Schneider down here from Pennsylvania to run the music. He's the best foosball DJ in all of the world, I think. Oh my gosh, he just turns it over to Brandon's five, who slaps it in. Three to nothing. That Rodlock shirt at the end of that commercial is too nice. Wait, nice too. We can take a peek at the Rodlocks. Commercial here shortly too. We got that one loaded up, locked and loaded. Little 60 second spot. Take a peek at that after this game. Tinch struggling to score or even clear the ball from the back here. And Brandon is just eager to end it. Clear here. It's a nice pass. Had a little bit of stank on it. Not sure if Brandon's going to catch that. I'm not sure if most players are going to catch it. The wee bit too heavy in the stank department. This part of the match, and I, I hate to put this on. Cam and, and Tench, but the way that the way that it feels is it feels like the match has been conceded and let's at least have fun on the way out. Let's try to do something cool. Let's try to do something wild or wacky or sexy or anything like that. And if you can pull this off, this four to one deficit in the third game, it'd be great, but I don't even know if that's the goal. I mean, you're always kind of kind of trying for that. Of course, as I say that, he sets one up. Just doesn't do anything crazy. He just sets it up and rips it to the pull side, then calls a timeout. So totally possible that I'm absolutely wrong. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I've been wrong a time or two in my life. Just gives you a good, uh, good angle of the whole room. You see the TVs on the truss there, folks in the bleachers watching that. That middle screen is, is showing them what you see there on the stream at home or wherever you may be. Those outside two screens that are facing away are static images that always show either the overhead or something else. And to win it, I didn't even get it out of my mouth. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> to win it all, that was Brandon Munoz who did score it. And he did win it. There you go. So that's a, that's a wrap as they unwrap. Brandon Munoz and Tim Lynch in this Pro-Am Fifth or Better winner's bracket match defeat Cam Burrows and Richard Tinch.